Good morning everybody. Welcome to this power supply upgrade video. So we have our PH1 screwdriver. We have our 700 watt power supply of course with a 5 year warranty. And we do have our Optiplex 790. So let's get to it. First thing we got to do is open up our side panel. Yeah the great thing about these Optiplexes is that you don't need a screwdriver to open it up. Next we need to disconnect our 24 pin connector. So I will put a screenshot of the motherboard layout as well. So here is the 24 pin connector. Next, we need to remove the four pin. So the four pin is where that yellow wire is. So let me get you a better look here. So the four pin is a 12 volt. So I'm just gonna gently disconnect it. Easy peasy. Next, we need to remove the SATA power from our hard drive. Voila. Next, we need to remove the power from our DVD drive. Since it's kind of cramped in there and it's kind of hard to see, I am just going to disconnect it and show you what it looks like. So let me just get in there. Voila, there you go. So that is the power to the DVD drive. All right, so basically we disconnected four things. It might depend on your setup on your computer. So for this video, you know, we just, we only had four things that we needed to disconnect. So now I'm unscrewing the four screws for our power supply here. I'm using a PH1 screwdriver, like I said earlier. I believe a PH2 screwdriver should also do the trick. Awesome. All right, here's a close up of the screws just in case you were wondering. Okay, now I need to show you this blue thing that we need to push down to remove the power supply. So as you can see, there's this uh, blue thing right there. I just gotta push it down and then I got to push the power supply inward to remove it. So I'm pushing it down right now. So let me get in there. Pushing it down and then I'm pushing the power supply inward and voila. Power supply has been removed. So let's pull it out of the case here. We got our spaghetti wiring. All right, next thing we got to do is we have to open up our brand new power supply. So we got our um, thermal take 700 watt smart series. So I do recommend reading the instructions. I'm also going to put a photo of um, part of the instructions. So it's got a power cord as well and some screws to go with it. So we do have a lot of wires here. I'm going to point out which of the cables we are going to use. So it's a nice looking power supply. All right, so Here is here are the cables we're going to use, the main 24 pin connector, the 4x4 four four pin, but we're only going to use um, half of it. And then we have our SATA 4 pin as well. These are the connectors we are going to use. Next, here is the layout of the motherboard, number 23 and number 17 I wanted to point out. So number 17 is the 4 pin and number 23 is the 24 pin. So. In the technical specs, it says that it's basically called a P2 and a P1 power connector. 
So here is something I wanted to highlight from the power supply instructions. So either one of the four pin from the 4x4 ATX 12 volt connector will work. Just wanted to let you know. Because it is um, you know together and then you split it up. So this is what it looks like. So what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to um, organize it. And I guess I'm going to tie up uh, some of the cables that we won't need. Just a little bit of cable management. I mean, the great thing about this Optiplex is, you know, you can't really see inside it. But, you know, a little bit of cable management might go a long way. Since there's a lot of um, cables on this thing. We got our SATA power. We have our 24 pin. Let's do it. So I am putting in the power supply here. Okay, let me get you a better look here. All right, now we need to get our screws. So like I said, it did come with four screws. Got our PH1 screwdriver. So it looks like these screws fit nicely. Awesome. Okay, so let us get down to business. So we have a lot of uh, cables here. So we disconnected four things, so we need to connect four things again. So let me just try to do a little bit of cable management here. I'm going to connect the SATA power to the hard drive. Easy peasy. Next, I'm going to connect our power to our DVD drive. Awesome. So let me just try to um, organize our cables here a little bit. Okay. Yeah, one of the cables we are going to be using for a graphics card in the future, but it's not something we have to worry about right now. So the next thing I'm going to connect is the 4-pin. So yeah, keep in mind that, like the manual said, you can use either one of the 4-pin connectors. So you can see it right there. And then now we are going to connect our 24-pin. Awesome. So that's our four pin that we connected. As you can see, there's another four pin right there that is not connected. And then that's our 24 pin. And then we have our SATA power right here for the hard drive. And we have our power for the DVD drive, which is covered in cables, which is really hard to see. So four things disconnected, four things reconnected. So let me clean it up a bit. I noticed that it was really dusty. You know, I should have cleaned it before we connected the new power supply, but you know, I didn't really notice it too much. So now that it's uh, not perfectly clean, but clean enough, you know, I want to make sure that we run a test and make sure that it's working properly. Okay, so let's close it up. Now I'm going to put these screws for the previous power supply just in case that we don't lose it and I'm going to put it in the thermal take box, you know, just, just in case if we need the power supply in the future. And I don't want to lose the screws either. Okay, now we are going to use our new power cord. Let me plug it in. And I do have it um, turned off. So... Let's turn it on. 
and then let us give it a boot up. So everything booted up well, power was good, and Windows booted up fine, I didn't see any issues. And it's a pretty quiet fan in my opinion. So I hope this video helps you out. Thank you for watching. Take it easy.